new niggas out, I'm that new nigga. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine niggas wanna war, ten niggas on the floor, eleven niggas on the floor, twelve killers wanna war, thirteen. What's up, guys? So welcome to the video. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over advanced motion keyframing and how to make your edits a little more interesting and maybe make them a little more smooth simply with position, scale, and rotation keyframing. Now, the pros of adding some additional motion keyframing to your shots are you could get smoother transitions, you could add focus to a particular subject, or you could just simply add some interesting camera motion. Now, if you watch that edit without the motion keyframing I added, it's still a cool edit because it's it's a bunch of hyperlapses. Hyperlapses are just cool. So there's already a lot of cool camera motion, but what we can do with the motion keyframing is smooth out the transitions and add focus to the subject like I did with the industrial crane thing over in the water. I zoomed in on that so that the focus was on that from the beginning. And then I did a little motion tile effect towards the middle end there. And we'll go over how I use that effect as well. But for now, let's get right into After Effects. As you can see, this is just my edit without any motion keyframing added. It's just the base hyperlapses. The camera motion is already kind of interesting because these are hyperlapses and hyperlapses have interesting camera motion in my opinion. I shot these on my Sony a7 III, soon to be Sony a7S III. Stay tuned, I'll be doing some Sony a7S III videos very soon. Since these were shot on my Sony a7 III, it has a photo resolution of 6,000 by 4,000, so I have the ability to move these around even more than a regular video clip. If you just took regular video clips, then obviously you can just scale in a little bit and then you can move it around within that space. Anyhow, I'm going to actually zoom out on all these shots so that you can see the full shot. And there's still little space because obviously 6,000 by 4,000 is kind of freaking huge. I highly recommend learning your keyboard shortcuts for motion keyframing, and those would be R. So select your clip, press R. That'll open up your rotation keyframes. Let's actually go ahead and add one at the beginning. Press S to open up scale keyframes. You can add one at the beginning as well. And then if you press P, that'll open up your position keyframes. Quick tip on position keyframes, I would actually separate the dimensions so that your X and Y are independent because when you edit your position keyframes, you actually can't go into graph editor and tweak the graph when they're together. It only allows you to add easy ease in and easy ease out, but we want full control over the graph of the motion. So separate those dimensions and then add a keyframe for X and Y. Now, if you select your clip and press U, that'll show all your keyframes that you're using and we can get in there and start adding in some motion. So as we can see, this clip is zooming out the entire time. So one thing you could do with keyframes framing is add more motion. So let's say we want this to zoom out even faster in case this isn't fast enough for you. Let's add a scale keyframe at the end. So this is the full clip still, but at the beginning, let's zoom in even more. Say, let's just say hundred percent. And that just makes it even faster. You could switch those keyframes to add a dolly zoom. That way it's zooming in the entire time as the clip pulls out. And what that does is it adds a little trippy effect where the background moves at a different speed than the foreground. And you can see that the buildings in the back kind of come up and stay the same size while the subject's closer get smaller. So those are just a couple basic techniques you can use here. I'm actually gonna reset and go back to 65% at the beginning so we can see the full shot. And of course, we can do that with all of these keyframes. So let's say we want to do a little dolly zoom, we wanna add a little rotation, and we want to move the clip around a little bit. Let's keep the subject centered a bit. Now it's just a bit of a dolly zoom and a bit of rotation keyframing. And that just kind of changes the shot a little bit. It changes the camera motion. That's just the basic way of doing your keyframe animation. Now, let's say we want it to rotate a little faster at the end to create a kind of rotating transition. What you can do is select that last rotation keyframe, click your graph editor, then click ease in, and then go to your first one, first keyframe and click ease out. And we can just manipulate these to move however we want them to move. And again, the steeper this slope, the faster it's rotating. So let's say we want it to rotate at this constant speed for a while, and it'll start rotating really fast towards the end and swing into the next clip. That wasn't quite as intense as I would have liked, so let's just make this steeper. See how it kind of rotates a bit at the end? You don't want to be too crazy with it, but if we add a little rotation on the next clip in the same direction, then it'll make a really smooth, seamless transition. So let's go to the next clip, and it's rotating in the positive rotation direction from zero to 12. So we're adding rotation in the clockwise direction. So we wanna add some clockwise rotation at the beginning of this clip. The next clip, go to R at the beginning. Let's make it negative 12 
and then go down to zero. That way it's going from negative 12 to zero in the positive clockwise direction. We can add an ease in on the last keyframe. Let's go into graph editor, zoom in a bit, and then let's add an easy ease out on the last one. And we want it to be rotating faster at the beginning because that's the transition. It's gonna rotate fast and then ease back into the next clip. So let's just bring this up so it has a steeper slope and see how that looks and see how it kind of rotates in the same direction. We left these black edges here, so let's actually add some scale keyframes to smooth that out. We'll have it scaled at normal size at the end and at the beginning, let's zoom in to cover those black edges. You'll definitely wanna go in there and add those same keyframes in a similar way in order to keep the motion consistent. So we had it really fast at the beginning, so add a steep slope and then easing in at the end, so it's upside down because we're scaling out in this case. Keep your keyframe motion consistent throughout your scale, rotation, position, or else it's gonna look really funky. Let's see how that looks. And that looks really smooth. So let's add a little more rotation. Let's start this at negative 10 and then zoom in to cover those edges. And actually let's go in and animate our scale to match our rotation keyframes. So our rotation keyframes look like that. So we're gonna do that with scale. So it's gonna be slower at the beginning and then zip up with the rotation. And you just have to scroll through your clip and make sure you're not leaking over the edges or anything. And that looks pretty smooth. See how that transition just kind of smooths out a teeny bit with that little bit of camera motion into the next shot? We can use the same technique to create zoom transitions. So let's say we want to take this clip and zoom out into this next clip. Press S to open up your scale keyframes. Let's have this at 65 and we're gonna do a zoom out transition. So let's bring this up to 100 over here. That way it zooms out fast into the next clip. And then we're gonna have to zoom out again on this clip. So add your keyframe here and then zoom in at the beginning so it can zoom out into it. So now it's zooming and it almost looks smooth there. It's actually, it looks pretty smooth already, but what we're gonna do is add a little whooshiness to that with the graph editor. So click your scale keyframes on your first clip, add a easy ease out on the first one, easy ease in on the last one. And then again, we want it to ease in to the scale out and then let the slope get really fast at the end so it really zips out of there. And then you wanna do the same thing on the next clip but have it be faster at the beginning. So add your easy ease out, bring it down so it's really fast and then have it ease into the scale it's gonna be for the rest of the clip. And that way you have a little zoom transition there. That's one way you can do zoom transitions without a plugin, by the way. And here's another technique that's really useful when it comes to motion keyframing. If we were to move the position keyframes here, you can see there's black space under the clip because the clip doesn't extend that far. But let's say we wanted to move it around and have it move over here without that black space. One thing you can do in addition to your motion keyframing is add a motion tile to your shot, then increase the output width and height to let's say 200. 200, click mirror edges, and that just allows you to move this around more seamlessly without people really noticing those edges. And you can really get crazy with your keyframes. You can rotate it and then nobody's gonna really be able to tell that if it's a, a quick little bit. One thing you can do with motion tile as well is get creative with that mirroring. So as you can see here in this clip to the right, you can see the sidewalk is kind of getting split in half. So if we were to move this clip over, you get a cool little mirroring effect. And I actually included that within my edit. So you can manipulate your X position keyframe. Let's have it start at 1920, centered like normal. Let's add another keyframe and have it shift over to the trippy mirroring sidewalk effect by shifting this over to, let's just make it zero so it's perfectly centered on the sidewalk. Add another keyframe and have it come back out to 1920, which is again, just centered. The cool thing about motion tile is it'll allow you to add a little extra motion. Let's say we wanted to add some rotation as well. So let's add a rotation keyframe here. Let's have it start a little rotated like this. 
and just figure out where it looks the most seamless. If motion tile was off, you would have all these black spaces, but without it, you can actually just add a little more motion to your shot and you have more freedom to play around with it. Again, you don't wanna go too crazy because if you were to do something like this, it looks really weird. But if you just wanna add a little extra rotation, motion tile can help you do that in a seamless fashion. And then again, with the mirroring effect, you can get creative with it. Let's actually go in and smooth that out with graph editor. So just add some keyframes here to make it smooth. Now we have a smooth little mirroring hyperlapse effect and I really like adding some mirroring effects to my hyperlapses on occasion when there's an opportunity like this. Just add in some cool sound design, maybe add a whoosh for the moving over portion and then a whoosh back and it'll really make your edit come alive a little bit. I actually noticed that there were some people in here and I added some iPhone, people talking, kids playing sound effects. It really just brings the edit to life. That's really it for this tutorial guys. I just wanted to share some additional techniques I use when it comes to motion keyframing because I know a lot of people really love the way my edits flow when it comes to the motion of the shots and the way I edit. And these are a handful of the techniques I use. It's definitely not all of them, but these are a good few that should give you some freedom to make your edits more seamless. And I really hope there was some helpful content in here. Personally, I feel like this was very basic for myself just because I've been using this for years. Let me know, was this helpful? Would you guys like more tutorials on similar content like this? You guys would like tutorials on other specific things that you see in say a Ben TK video? Just let me know in the comments and I will look into making a tutorial for it. Thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to follow my Instagram. Right,